I went through, so I went through a coaching program earlier this year and the coach was so adamant about making himself look good. Right. And he wanted me to get sales and run out and start coaching and charge and blah, 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 blah. It wasn't, it wasn't what I wanted to do in that moment. And I was more worried about the systems. I needed to have the foundation down. How was I going to take care of my client? I want a website. I want the things that make me comfortable. I knew there was automation. Why would I go take on clients and have like a shitty foundation? What would be the first step? Yes. And he really was upset. And I know it was all about his image, right? Because the clients run out and they make, you know, 10,000, 15,000. Well, there's no scalability in that either because there's no, there's just no way. Right. You have to learn the things. And I could see that. And uh, it was really a pain point. And then we got on a call one day and I ran them through my computer and showed them some of, you know, my processes. And the next thing you know, he's telling the group, oh, Bobby's got some good systems. (laughs) Yes. It's important to me. And I think that's what's kind of fun, too, in our world, online education, networking, all the things that you and I do together, Mm -hmm. separate together. But, you know, in that world, I think there needs to be the very creative and then there's like the businessy piece. And and you're lucky you have it both. If you can do graphic design, that kind of stuff, and have a good handle on the business. I mean, this hard brain. (laughs) What's that? I'm a weird brain. I geek out on, on graphic design and spreadsheets. <laughs> yeah, it's um, it's really a gift. I mean, I, I come from floral manager, right? And to promote into corporate level, you can't just do with the floral manager that's an amazing designer. They just don't have the capability. And it's not an insult. It's just how we are. Totally. It's very hard to learn the business. And yeah. Just like me, I went through it and I was an okay designer, but a better business person. Like it really is clear. So like I said, I have great respect and admiration for you having both sides. That's pretty good. Nice. Thank you. Two things come up with for me when you said that, that triggered for me. Can I share? Absolutely. So the first thing is coaching, especially, obviously I keep talking about solopreneurs because that is where my heart is. And this really applies to any entrepreneurs. But coaching is a weird thing because I have never, once I hired my first coach, I've never been without a coach because I feel like coaching is helping me learn things that I don't know or don't know about myself that I need. So I'm always looking for what is the next thing I need and get the right coach. Um, So there's two things. One, and just kind of a word of the wise is making sure that you find a coach that you really click with on a personal level. Um, and aligns with that identity, (laughs) you know, knowing who you are. The other thing is finding the right coach for where you're at. And I don't know your situation. I'm not, this isn't a commentary on your situation at all. But one of the things that I learned from one of my coaches several years ago that I thought was the most mind blowing and brilliant thing is doing things in the right order. Because when we started business, okay, I'm going to go start marketing. Like I just need clients. I need people in the door. I need people paying me. So you start with marketing. Well, then people come in the door and like, okay, great, serve me. And you're like, oh, now what? (laughs) How do I do that? How do I sell you? How do I serve you? How do I finish up our project? So when, especially when we work through the client journey and then the systems, we always start with the service delivery first. Because if you have that figured out, you have those cert- that systems figured out, and you can deliver consistently and predictably and profitably and powerfully, um, then then when you then you figure out your sales process, then you go out and find people, and then once those people are in, they start trickling through that the sales process and your service delivery. They are wowed because you've promised many many things. You've given them even more. As opposed to, let me get them in the door, push them through the process, that there is no process, and they run screaming because they're like, well, that's not what you promised me, or that's not what I expected. So we always start with that service delivery to just your point, because you got to get that stuff dialed in. Otherwise, I mean, you're going to crumble. Yeah, you hit it on the head about 
the expectations. I didn't get what I expected. The sales call was really good to get me in the door. <laughs> right. And, and I actually, I just went through this this week. I had went to a different conference. I found someone that I thought could add value. Uh-huh. And I think still they could. Then I spent the weekend at an event with them. And I've never had this experience. And I can't wait to see your face when I tell you what they did. Oh, <laughs> it, it was an online class, two and a half days. He literally threatened to throw us out of the group if we didn't have our cameras on. Yeah, that face. That face. And they don't understand why I want to not work with them. Wow. That's harsh. Yeah. And he would call people out if if we were coming back from a break or something. Uh Don't tell Turn on your cameras or we'll quietly remove you. Wow. paying for this. Right, right. And I'm like, oh, no, I can't work with this guy. Like, I had to run for the freaking hills after that experience. Um, So I just want to call out that point because you make a really good one for our listeners. Two things that you said. One, I agree with you a million percent. Now that I have coaches, I will never be without a coach. So I'll level up. I'll learn new things. I'll do whatever because you're 100% right. You have to be at a different, like, at different stages, you need different coaches. Mm -hmm million percent. There was a book that, uh, one of my other peers recommended and they made the point of how do you be a coach if you don't have a coach? Oh. You're telling people you don't even believe in coaching. Yeah, right. <laughs> Another whole, <laughs> that's a very good point. Yeah. I never thought of it either. Uh-huh. And I had a third point and I totally lost it, but <laughs> Oh, to really, to really take the time to interview and get to know, like as a client, you have a right to what you want or what you need. Uh-huh. And as someone who has, who's kind of like a softy, right? Like I don't want to hurt your feelings. Yeah. And, you know, I could see you being that kind of, you know, heart too. Um, we have to protect ourselves. So I'm saying that for the audience because it's, it's coming up and it hasn't come up before. And yeah, so important. Yeah, you're hundred percent right. And that, and, and then thinking about, especially if you're in the business of coaching for the listeners, that's why having kind of the tiers of ways for people to experience you is important. You know, having the free ways or the low, low price ways that people can experience you and get into your world and see if you're a fit. I'm a big believer that I, I don't, I, I don't want to sell just to sell. I want to sell if it's the right fit. Like I want to, I want to serve you. And in exchange for that, I expect money, of course. Yes. But if you're, if I can't serve you, if I don't feel like I can help you or you're not going to be the right fit for what I need, then let's not do this. Like let's, let's go find you somebody else who can help you with what you need because there, there is the identity alignment (laughs) back to, you know, back to my original point. Um, And that's not there those are the clients who are going to suck you dry of your energy, your time, your money. And it's not good for anybody. So bless them, release them. And for, as a coach, as a, you know, for clients, whatever, but just looking for those people who you are meant to work with. Yeah. That's another point that I just want to echo. Cause you're right. Not every client's the right client and it's okay to feel that way. And it's okay to, what did you say? Bless them and release them. <laughs> Yes. <laughs> um, yeah. I noticed that if the clients don't see the value in what we do, they're not my clients. Yeah. Yeah. It's just that simple. Yeah. This isn't a, a haggling business. I'm doing the best I can to, to trade the right stuff. Um, right. As we all are right. Mm-hmm. Well, most of us um, mm-hmm. in this world. So it was another yeah. point. Yeah. And, and I, when I am vetting a client, when I'm having that sales conversation, so yes, I'm trying, I'm showing them the value of my services, but I'm also listening to them and trying to ask them questions to see if they're a fit. And I will go back to my identity and my core values, especially. And I look to make sure that they align with at least three of my four core values. Um, if not all of them, if they align all of them, then I know they're perfect, but, and they have to at least mostly align. But one of my um, core values is coachable, coachable and community and collaborative. And if, if I'm talking to somebody and I've gotten this several times, if I'm talking to somebody and I'm offering them suggestions or asking them questions and they get defensive or 
you know, they just don't have that posture of being willing to listen, then I know they're not going to be a good client. Not that I have all the answers, but I, my approach is working with them to figure out the answers. And if they can't do that, then I'm not the right coach for them. They're going to drive me nuts. I'm going to drive them nuts. So bless and release. <laughs> yes. Yes. So hopefully, it's important. hopefully the newer entrepreneurs, solopreneurs, and even if, if you're someone who's looking for a job. This is another example that I believe in. When you go into an interview, you're interviewing that company too, whether it's in this entrepreneurial space or it's a big company, like it has to be a good fit. We spend most of our time in these environments. We have to be happy. Totally. At least that's my value system. (laughs) Right. Yeah. No, I totally agree. I totally agree. If I went to go find a job right now, it would be a a long, not a long search, but I would be very selective about who I would even think about joining because I'd have to look for that alignment. (laughs) Yeah, it's important. But you know what? We're we're sitting here with smiles on our faces, right? Like totally totally. wake up in the morning. So right. Absolutely. So tell people, please, we're, oh wait, not yet. I got to ask you my fun little question. Okay. Here we go. And it doesn't have to be business related, but what is your favorite book? Favorite book. Okay. The first one that comes to mind is a business related book. (laughs) Um, And I, it's Profit First by Mike McCallowitz. It, it, to me, it is a must read for all, especially solopreneurs um, because it's fills one of those hats, or at least it it addresses one of those hats that we all have to wear. And that's the financial management. Um, when I got into business, I approached business like I was reconciling my personal checking account (laughs) and, you know, and, and so bills come in, you pay the bills and then what's left over is what I paid myself. So oftentimes I wouldn't pay myself. So profit first kind of flips that on the, on its end and teaches you how to pay yourself first, still take care of your business, but you pay yourself first. And that has been transformative in my business so that I can pay, my, pay myself every month and not kind of come second, for, second, second fiddle um, to the business. So Profit First is my number one recommendation for, especially for entrepreneurs. That is awesome. You said Michael who? Mike McCallowitz. Um, if you Google Profit First or The Pumpkin Plan is another really good one of his, any of his books are great. But those two, if you Google those, you'll find it. It's, I, it's, I don't even think it's worth trying to spell it. I, I wouldn't get it right. And it wouldn't help you. Well, one of my goals is I think it would be very helpful to the audience to actually have links to these books wherever mm-hmm. we are. Mm-hmm. So it's kind of fun because I'm getting different answers with each interview. Cool. And, um, and that's why it's okay. It could be a recreational book, a business yeah. book. And that's why I don't tell my, my interviewees what I'm going to ask. Cause it's more fun. Yeah, absolutely. I love that. Yeah. So remind everybody how to find you and tell me if I forgot anything that you wanted to cover. I don't think so. I think my website is lone orange, L O N E orange, like the fruit.com. So think of the lone ranger. Um, and um, I'm on Facebook primarily. So again, just at lone orange, um, if you are, can I offer a free gift? Sure. So if you're interested in kind of learning more and figuring out if you have a business that's scalable or kind of where you're at, maybe figure out some of the gaps that you might not be seeing. Um, you can go to lone orange slash.com slash S S I and the S S I stands for scaling success inventory. So it's a quick, like less than five minute quiz but it's going to give you some deep information about where you're at and those four pillars that I talked about and where you can focus first to start kind of shoring up that foundation. Beautiful. So I would love for anybody who's interested to find out if they're, they have a scalable business to go take that. That is, that is awesome. We really appreciate that. And we'll make sure that that gets publicized as well. I think Miss Carmela is helping us with such logistics. Perfect. I'm not that organized quite frankly. <laughs> So that's great. Well, Tiffany, I appreciate you being here so much. It's so good to see you. And pleasure. uh, I'll see you on the chat. Okay. Sounds good. Thanks so much, Bobby. Thanks for the opportunity. You bet.